There we go. Yep. So my name is Jamie Pollock. I am a research and development tax consultant at Leighton. Um, I believe you, you spoke to one of my colleagues, Rebecca, in a previous session, so you may know a wee bit about the company and what we do. But again, I'll just kind of reiterate what, we're, what uh, Rebecca spoke about, uh, explain a bit about what research and development is and what my job role is and how I work with data on a daily basis. And then we'll go on to talk about one of the key data skills that I think it's important to have, especially when you're, you're working with such personal data uh, that people provide. So firstly, what is research and development? Well, research and development is the de developing um, new and in innovative pro products or services or improving existing ones. Um, so a lot of you will probably know that um, research and development is very common in the medical sector and the science sector in terms of like vaccine um, uh, creations. Uh, a lot of the chat recently is all about COVID. So of course, that's, that's a lot of the news. They're trying to develop a vac vaccine. And that's essentially what research and development is: coming up with new products or services that, that push the boundaries uh, and improve uh, kind of our, our lives. Um, but out with the medical and science sector, engineering and the te technology sector is, is Andy is fairly huge. So. The, the, the two sectors we do focus on is, is science and technology because that is where the most advancements come from. Um, the projects don't have to be entirely successful. What the what, uh, companies are, are trying to achieve or what universities or, or laboratories are trying to achieve uh, is unknown, it's uncertain, so there is a huge risk involved. They, they can go through a whole project and, and get to the end and realise that the outcome they are trying to achieve isn't there. Um, and uh, all the time is there is, isn't wasted because there's some technical knowledge uh, gained from it, but um, it, it obviously would be disappointing to them. Um, and, and where our company comes in, or where I come in, is many businesses don't even know what they're doing as R&D. We work with a lot of engineers uh, who, who carry out what they feel is day-to-day -day projects, but when we sit down and discuss what research development is, that they, they actually are carrying out uh, R&D. So first of all, I'd like to talk a bit about engineering. That's probably the, the main kind of companies that we work with. So engineering and research development kind of go hand in hand uh, because there's a lot of bespoke or unknown issues that uh, engineers are, are trying to kind of improve or achieve. So I always like to use the example of the Shard. The Shard's a, a great example of research and development. It's the tallest building in the European Union. So when building the Shard, there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, there's a lot of R&D projects that has to take place in order to create a building as, as vast as this. For example, the the, the, win, the windows and the facade, it's got to be able to withstand uh, incredible wind loading. So a lot of kind of data modeling, uh, trial and error, uh, there's, there's so much that's got to go in before it get, you get to the finished product. It, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, even out with that, you're building it in the centre of London, there's, there's subways underneath, underground. So you've got to take that into consideration when you're using the, the pilling techniques or coming up with ideas of how, how to just create a, such a vast structure. Um, so the, the uh, scaffolding as well, sorry. Uh, ex one example we always use is, is trying to clean the windows. Uh, there's always scaffolding because, for example, nobody's ever scaffolded a, a building as a, such as a shard. So there's a lot of uncertainties uh, the, and advancements that have got to take place for in order for something like the, the, the shard to be created. Also at wind farms as well, we, we work with a lot of offshore wind farms. Um, renewable energy is obviously huge and, and rightly so. So a lot of the companies we work with um, help create offshore wind farms. That, that comes with huge technical challenges. Firstly, being it's in the, the middle of the ocean, so it's not always as straightforward as, as building that on land. Again, when it comes to maintaining these structures, when it, again, to use the example of scaffolding, the, it, it's not your standard techniques that your your day-to-day -day, uh, scaffolder will, will use. So you've got to have this element of uncertainty or you've got to be one of the industry leaders in order to kind of be able to carry out the, these jobs. Again, moving on to science, farming is absolutely huge uh, in research and development. So you've always got feed trials. Uh, companies are always trying to come up with ways to improve animal health or to improve food quality. 
Um, also, we've got a kind of sports science as well. We, we work a lot of football clubs when they try to develop how better outcomes for the players, how to keep the players fit, uh, how to improve performance, essentially. So we, we work with them as well. Funnily enough, as horse trainers as well, for similar reason as to athletes, uh, horse trainers as well, to, to keep like the horse's health up, to keep them performing at a, a great level. Um, moreover than that, uh, we've got crop sustainability. Um, companies trying to improve the lifespan of food, medical research, as I mentioned at the start, uh, and, and vaccine development. The, the, these are all huge research and development uh, proposals uh, and kind of achievements. So uh, it happens in day-to-day -day life uh, without people even, even knowing it. And then the kind of last industry we work with is software. So that's all your apps, your app creations, such as like your, your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even games, Fortnite, uh, there's a lot of coding that goes into this, a lot of data information that go, go into this, and not all of it's standard. There's always people out there trying to push the boundaries, trying to develop something more in innovative than before, taking what was already there and improving it to a better standard so it can do more than what it previously done. So yeah, it's all very interesting when it comes to kind of research and development. So what my job mainly is, is to help these companies access funding through an HMRC, a, a government scheme, where they can claim money back for the work that they've done previously. So this, this is a Hector, the, the tax man, he's always very common. Um, so what we try to achieve is get money back for the government and that allows them to kind of reinvest and reward them for the innovation, reward them for trying to push the boundaries, um, for trying to kind of become world leaders. Um, the money they get, they can always reinvest into into future projects, so it keeps that kind of sphere of or, or circle of R and D moving. And yeah, as as I was saying, that the government like to encourage companies to become world leaders, especially here in the UK. We we like to see um, us being industry leaders uh, in science, technology. We like to see us being the best of engineers, etc. So, what I do on a day to day basis, I use data. All, all day, every day. Uh, I take personal information, a lot of it is like salary information and don't worry, this is all kind of, uh, this is one I made up earlier, so it's not anyone's actual personal information. But what I do, I've got to collect all this information and then I've got to work with it and, and do a financial assessment. Um, so that, that is the essence of, of my job. I've got to kind of work with these large data sets and got to gather the information which is challenging because when you're working with companies and individuals who just want to be engineers and do their day-to-day -day work and you go and ask them to collate massive spreadsheets like this, it, it can be difficult for them to understand. So we, uh, that, that can be challenging. Um, we've also got to kind of work with companies' finances, work out what costs qualify up against HMRC's scheme um, and then complete a financial assessment that goes into the company's accounts and then that's how they access the, the money. So our end product essentially is twofold. We've, we've got the report on the, the left hand side there and that is what our engineer will draft. For example, they, they'll take all the really cool information uh, that, that's been involved in the projects and how challenging it's been and what they've done to overcome these challenges and write a, basically write a story about what this company has done and then I come in the right hand side and I'll do the kind of no, no I wouldn't say boring but the the less exciting tax stuff so I, I will complete tax returns I will help the company uh, file them onto the uh, accordingly with HMRC and make sure that they get their, their money back so um, when when we work as, as R&D consultants it's, it's as a team so I'm always coupled with for example Rebecca who, was, who did a presentation previously we, uh, we work together and she'll work with the, the company to get all the, the nice cool information and I'll, I'll pull out all the, the financial information. So that's a wee bit about what I do. I do. Um, as I said at the start, I always feel it's important to kind of grasp key skills. So the first one, or the only one I really want to talk to today about is compliance. Uh, for me, it is the most important one, um, especially now more so than ever. The data we we provide other companies, etc., um, can be used for various sorts. They can tell so much about us that it's important that we know who is storing our data and how securely they're storing the data and what they're using it for. So 
for me, when, when I get these large data sets in, it's got in people's names, it's got their income, it's got their national insurance number. I'm responsible for what I do with that information. I've got to make sure that I've got permission to have it, firstly. firstly. Um, I've got to kind of treat it sensitively so I, I know that um, it's not going to go into the wrong hands, that people aren't going to use it for out with its purpose. And I've got to kind of store it safely. So I've got to make sure that my computer's locked at all time or it's stored securely in the server and nobody's got access to that. So if I nip to get a cup of tea, that nobody's going to be able to log into my computer and look at that, that really sensitive information. So why do we have to kind of comply with this? Um, well, as I was saying earlier, our data tells us a lot about us. It tells us what our hobbies are, tells us what our likes are, our dislikes are our music taste, our favourite chocolate bar, it tells so much about us. So it's important that when we provide other companies or other people with, with data, that they are using it for the right reasons uh, and not using it against us, for example. So there is a, a, a law that has been brought in, the, the GDPR, as we call it, um, the General Data Protection Regulations, uh, and that allows us to have greater control of how we pass our data uh, and our rights and requesting what information people hold for us. So, for example, each company has got to abide by, by these six principles. Um, so, uh, sorry. For example, data minimization uh, is one of the six principles. We need to make sure that we're not gathering as, uh, more than we need. Everything's got to be exactly what we need uh, and no more than that. Um, again, for accuracy, it's got to be fair and it's got to be a, a, an accurate representation. We can't just put any old information there. It's, it's got to be accurate to the, the individual. Um, we've only got able to store it for X amount of time to make sure that it's not being kept for, for years and years. Uh, and again, it's got to be treated with integrity and confidentiality. We, we can't go past that on to anyone else and companies all over Europe and the world uh, should be doing the same, that they, they should not be passing it on to or selling that for, for profit. GDPR allows citizens to easier easier understand um, their, their, their rights and responsibilities, as I was saying. We can request information from people who we believe hold our data to make sure that what they hold is fair and accurate. Uh, and, and as always, there's big trouble for breaking the rules. Right now, there, there's two tiers of fines. For example, a, a company can be charged up to 10 million euros, uh, which is huge, uh, if they have what they call a tier one fine or a tier two breach is, is 20 million euros. So uh, it is very important that data is stored and used accordingly uh, so that yeah, people, people don't have to worry about who knows or who has what about them. So. Just to finish off, the key points for today, uh, really to do with compliance, is, is it's paramount that we keep our data safe, that we know who stores our data. And, and working with data as well, we've got to abide by the rules and regulations to ensure that we are safe from, you know, from not passing the data on to, to others that we shouldn't, and vice versa, that people whose data we hold uh, are safe in the knowledge that we're not going to treat it maliciously. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if I can give anything away for this, or if you can take anything away from this presentation, I'd say data compliance is, is probably one of the most important things to to understand when you, you start to work with data, especially when it comes to people's individual data. Um, but in terms of the presentation, thanks for listening, and, and that's all I've got for the moment, but I'm more than happy to take any questions. Thank you for that, Jamie. It was brilliant. Um, so, okay, so let's start with the questions. Um, what made you go into your field? Um, just to, uh, just, uh, uh, for me, it was to do with work with data. I love working with spreadsheets, um, as a lot of people kind of struggle to understand. I, I really do like getting huge data sets, problem solving. So when you get something that's a lot of time, companies will, for example, send us these huge data sets and they won't be in Excel format or they'll be in a different format. Uh, sometimes they're handwritten. Uh, so just trying to collate everything together into a workable format and also working in finance. I, I'm, I'm, I've never done a study of engineering or anything like that. So being able to work with these companies and understand what they're trying to achieve. Um, and some of the projects are, are really interesting and uh, every day is 
you learn something new because you work with an industry or you work with a, a company who you just they're doing for example working for somebody in the North Sea or building submarines and just kind of working with these guys are, are pretty cool. Okay brilliant um so what kind of route did you go down was this was it something you wanted to do from from being a young a youngster um that you sort of progressed into was there an um, apprenticeship involved maybe? No, my kind of route to, to the job I'm doing now is fairly strange. I studied politics at university. Um, working again, working with data, it's, it's all quite relative uh, when it comes to that. And then I started working for a, a charity, running a, a kind of bespoke project uh, in the area where I lived. Um, and then I progressed onto working in Parliament for, a, for politicians. And then in January, I decided to kind of take the jump and, and co try something new. And it, it's been really good. Oh, wow. Okay, um, so what kind of, is there any qualifications that you've, that you've needed in the role that you're in now? Not necessarily, no. Um, it's one of the jobs you can learn with doing. I think having a key understanding of Excel and how to, to work with Excel has been most in, the most important part of the job. Um, un learning the, the kind of tax side is, is I wouldn't say easy to do, but you can do it on the job uh, and it is really interesting. There is qualifications I'm going to put myself forward for in the, the coming years, but um, but right now, no, I didn't really need to get a, have a qualification to get here, but it certainly does help. Mm -hmm. um, so aside from the academic skills, what, mm -hmm. what non-academic skills would you say that you needed to do in your job? Um, I think just generally being a, a people person, being able to kind of discuss uh, and pick up the phone, uh, not be not be scared to, to talk to anyone really. I think that's a key skill as well. Just be confident in yourself. I'd say that's that's probably the key skill. Mm -hmm. Um. So what what is what would you say is sort of the favourite part of your job? Oh, I think the end process when we get to the end and we're able to pull everything together and you can look at the assessment and the report and think you started for nothing and then you've got this and then you're able to pass it on to the the company who are able to then claim money back f mm -hmm. for like their innovation it's really nice to see and and you get a kind of get quite excited to see companies being able to, to to achieve that without even knowing like four weeks before when we started working with them they wouldn't even know that they could have got to this point mm -hmm. so i think that's really good to see are there any sort of like um shocking statistics that you've that you've uncovered um no, I don't, nothing that springs to mind, I don't think. Uh, no, sorry, I can't no. think of any, any, anything that springs to mind. <laughs> so, um, we'll move on to the next one. Um, I, I think I already know the answer to this, but mm -hmm. do you think anyone can work in the data industry? Yeah, definitely. I think now more so than ever, um, data's everywhere. Everything we touch, everything we do, uh, there's data involved. So, yeah, I think anyone can work with data and, and probably will be in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so young data scientists have to use mm -hmm. programs such as Excel during yeah. this project. Obviously you've already gone on to, to say how, how Excel is important in your role. Mm -hmm. What kind of key bits of advice would you have for young people just, just trying to navigate their way around it? Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of time I, I've I've looked at YouTube videos. There's lots of stuff out there trying to because the, the, the functions involved in Excel, there's there's tons, there's more than I know. Um, so things that you're not quite sure about, but you want to learn, like YouTube videos, or there's plenty of web pages, and then just kind of try on error. A, a lot of time I've spent when I've been trying to do something with the program, um, it's just a case of trying. Uh, and if something fails, trying something else. For example, V lookups, uh, H lookups to, can take a wee while to get your, your head around. But after once you kind of know how to do it, they're, they're perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, is there is there another part or pathway um, in your place of work that you would like to explore in the future? Yeah, potentially. That, that's the really good thing about like kind of working with data and working in financial services. There's, there's always kind of pathways. Um, I'd like to understand the, the more technical side, for example, working with engineers uh, and, and how they do their jobs. Uh, it's something I'd be, be keen to kind of get a bit more information on. Cool. Um, so just a bit about you. Um, yeah. What do you sort of do to, to de-stress? What are your hobbies and interests? Oh. Um, 
I mean, I love just watching TV, if I'm honest. <laughs> uh, I'm a big Netflix fan. But even things like going out a run or going to the gym, um, playing football, just anything really. Uh, listen to music as well is a big one. I, I try to, if I'm working away, I'll, I'll always have headphones in and just kind of have kind of music in the background, audio books, or at night, I try to shut off and just kind of read a book before, before bed. Right. Um, I was actually watching Netflix last night and watched um, a programme called The Social Dilemma. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of really that. Really interesting, all yeah. about um, the data that, that companies use and how they use it to exactly certain things. It was really interesting. Yeah, no, I, I was a big fan when that came out. I think the day that came out, I sat and watched it. I was, I was, I, cause I'd seen the, the trailer for it and I was desperate to watch it. I really like, really like programmes like that. Yeah, I was hooked. Um, okay. So what kind of subjects did you enjoy at school? Um, English, for example, I really enjoyed, uh, enjoyed English. History, I was, a, I was a huge fan of history. Um, they were probably my, my two better subjects. Uh, and then like PE. Um, I wasn't huge in maths when I was younger, but I wish I was a wee bit when now, <laughs> like looking back, uh, because it is such a key, key skill, uh, especially in the industry you're working in, I'm working in now. Uh, I wasn't too bad at it, but it wasn't my best. But yeah, English and history, I, I used to love history. If you if you weren't in the current position that you're in, um, mm -hmm. what do you think you would like to be doing? Oh, I think I'd like to be a journalist. Oh wow! Okay. I've always like well, I've not, I've always kind of liked the idea of writing and kind of um, like I'm always on like Twitter and kind of watching the news, etc. So I think I would quite quite like to give that a go. Okay, brilliant. Um, do you do you get to travel a lot with with your job? Um, I started back in February, so after about oh, five yeah, weeks in, we started working from home. But there's there's always opportunities. A lot of companies like pe the, the 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 team to go on site to to meet them to get a better understanding of what they're doing, and that's completely understandable because it's always great to have the hands-on experience of how people work and what they're trying to achieve. So not so much yet, but hopefully. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we have, um, so next week is, is World Statistics Day yep. and this, this comes around once every five years and we have been looking into it and trying to come up with our favourite statistic. Do you have anything that sort of springs to mind? Oh, oh that's a tough one. Oh no, I need to go away and have a think about it. Okay, well you just send me an email. <laughs> yeah, I'll do. Apologies, no, my mind's went blank. I think I was I was looking into it and um, supposedly only 0.17% of the world's population have natural red hair and blue eyes, so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's my favourite. Probably because it relates to me. I was going to go for something with like Jaffa Cakes, but no. Um, okay. Um, so part of our Stat Wars competition, we have two yep. strands. So we have the film and TV, which looks into the, the, the film and TV industry, the entertainment yep. industry. And then on the other strand, we have our climate change challenge. Mm -hmm. So what we ask pupils is to, to look at the data that, that, that they, sort of things that they use. So food intake, yep. um, water consumption, transport, things like that. And we ask them to come up with three things that they would change in their own lives to reduce the impacts of climate change. Yep. If I was to ask you, what are your three things that you would change? Okay. What would they be? Um, like I'd like to recycle more. I'm pretty good at it, but I'd like to be better. Um, I think at the start of lockdown, maybe it went a wee bit not, not as great, but I've got a recycling box that I keep next to the back door. And then I always like put my food waste in there or, uh, or separate the, the cardboard from the glass and the plastics, etc. Um, other than that, I think I'm always conscious, and I know uh, one of my friends actually started doing it, is like a, a second-hand clothing challenge. So she's trying to go a full year without buying any new purchases, other than maybe the essentials. Um, but yeah, she's going to go a full year with just going into kind of charity shops or like bartering online. And it's quite interesting to see like some of the purchases she was able to get. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, the last one, um, I always thought I'd want to use my car less. In my new job, I don't, well, obviously I'm in the house now, but when I started this job here, um, what I thought first thing I did was cut down my, my kind of use of the car. So I started getting public transport. 
Uh, so I think that's the three things that I've done or are trying to achieve. Brilliant. Um, and finally, uh, for the pupils doing the competition, so doing the Stat Wars competition, do you have any, any words of advice for them? Yeah, just um, keep going. Uh, it's always important to kind of work with data. And I know it can be difficult and kind of, uh, a lot of time it can be quite disheartening uh, when you come across complex challenges. Uh, I'd always just say just keep going and you, you'll always kind of get to the, the point where you can, the, the point you want to get to. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. Yeah, um, thank it's, you. Been, it's been brilliant this afternoon. Really enjoyed your presentation. Obviously, Cheers. research and development is something that's so it's in it's in every company that you come across exactly and it's so vast and it's so challenging and that's where the kind of thing that we see is when you start speaking to to companies they don't even know that they're doing it and you just you need to sit down and say like what you're doing is like really pretty much pretty cool like like yeah. you'll get to try to achieve this like, uh, you deserve a kind of reward for it so yeah yeah no it was brilliant um thank you very much and thank you for ask, answering our questions and, and thank you to those who, who actually submitted questions and have watched today. So that's, that's, that's it for today. Uh, yep. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. See you Bye. later. Bye.